We added uh, two new powertrains and upgraded the suspensions. We had uh, previously, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, four-speed transmission. We moved up to six-speed. On this current vehicle, we're carrying that over, but both of the engines have been completely reworked. Uh, there's two engines. The base engine here at the bottom is a 1.6 liter uh, GDI engine. We added direct injection to it at the facelift. Uh, for the new application in this new car, we've improved the low-end torque. And really, we heard loud and clear from our customers that most people use these cars around town. That's where most people live in an urban area. So they wanted more responsiveness around town droppability. Instead of, there's not a lot of people who take these things out and put it at red line, uh, driving it on a day-to-day -day, day out basis. So uh, all of our work on the engineering side was to move both the horsepower and the torque peak down to a much lower RPM band. And the benefit here, of course, is you see on this one, uh, 130 horsepower overall peak. But more importantly, we have this tremendous increase in torque at the low RPM range. And this is just off of idle when you can take off the stoplight or you're re-accelerating through. You, you make a right-hand turn onto a busy street and you need to get back up to speed very quickly. It's that torque that's able to deliver that much more satisfying driving experience. The up-level engine, which is probably on about 70% of the vehicles that we sell, It'll be the engine that you experience today is a, a two-liter GDI engine. It's part of our new family. Uh, for the previous application, it had multi-point injection. Now we switched over also to direct injection on this one. And this has two benefits for us. Uh, we were able to get greater efficiency, but also we were able to, similar to the 1.6 liter, retune it for more horsepower and torque at the low end. And here, the jump has been even more dramatic. We've had we were able to drop the horsepower RPM from 6,500 down to 6,200. But more importantly, we were able to get that low end torque up to almost 10%, which is a huge amount for a small engine. And uh, it's, it's quite dramatic when you drive it today. You'll feel it has uh, very, very good drivability around town. And coupled with that uh, six-speed automatic transmission uh, makes for a very, very nice driving experience. Uh, fuel economy numbers have been finalized. But, uh, these are our numbers. For the two liter, it's 23 in the city and 31 on the highway. And on the 1.6 liter, it's 24 in the city and 30 on the highway. Uh, important point here, I mentioned uh, at the outset this new group of competitors coming in, the Juke, uh, the Mini Countryman, and uh, also the Fiat 500L, all of those vehicles burn premium fuel. For us, we felt it's important for cost of ownership and also to maintain our overall value uh, story is to develop all of our new vehicles burning only regular fuel. So if you look at the overall picture relative to this new set of vehicles, we have a much better cost of ownership story instead of having to pay that 10 or 20 cents extra to fill up your vehicle with premium. So great great overall story for uh, for cost of ownership. Uh, for Kia, it wouldn't be complete without a safety story. And here again, this is from the outset, was designed from the beginning with the latest safety technology. Um, there's a, a list of equipment here, I'm not going to go through all of it, but in essence it's a six airbag system and it also contains a total of eight different passive and active safety systems that work in conjunction with one another to make this one of the safest vehicles on the road, in addition to the new tough body. So we've, we're, we're very uh, proud of the fact that a lot of work was gone into maintaining our leadership and safety.